There are two main things gamers need from their storage. It needs to be large and it needs to be fast. SSDs in its various forms have become larger and faster over the last few years, meeting most gamers' needs. However, engineers have started to find ways to unlock the true potential of new SSDs. Microsoft Direct Storage API is one fruit of that effort. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Sabrent we love to make and talk tech. So if that's what you're into then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. While the hype around Microsoft Direct Storage API has been around for the last few years, most storage improvements have been confined to consoles. The current Xbox consoles uses this kind of technology with great success, but PC gamers have yet to experience it. Developers of the video game Forspoken have announced that they will be the first to take advantage of the new Direct Storage API on PC, and many game developers are taking a dive into the technology as well. So let's take a look at what exactly direct storage is, why people are excited for it and what kind of systems will be able to use it. Direct storage is a low level storage API developed by Microsoft to take advantage of SSDs via the NVMe drive. This will allow video games to fully utilize NVMe SSDs for faster game load times and better performance with asset streaming. To understand how direct storage works, we first have to understand how storage is utilized in a video game. Whenever you download a video game from the internet, all the files needed to run the video game are placed in your storage device. This includes assets like sounds, textures, AI code, models, maps, and all the other accompanying files needed to run the video game. So when you are running a video game, these files need to be accessed by your computer. The faster your computer can access and read these files, the faster the game will load and the smoother the experience will be. A faster storage device like an SSD sees faster game loading times than hard disk drives, but this can be improved further. While SSDs did make an improvement in game load times, they aren't really helping in other departments like increasing game frame rates or reducing game stutters. Except for faster loading times, there wasn't really much advantage of having a faster SSD over a fast SSD in most games. Another shortcoming was that there was no real difference in performance of a video game between an old SATA SSD and a new cutting edge new M.2 PCE SSD. This was the main motivation behind Microsoft Direct Storage Program, to fully take advantage of increasingly faster SSDs. While the API was initially developed for the Xbox Series X, it has now made its way over to PCs. PCs have access to a wider range of hardware, so it can potentially benefit even more, including with its storage improvements outside of gaming. The main reason why there wasn't any difference in performance between older generations of SSDs and newer generations of SSDs was that the games weren't optimized effectively to utilize SSDs since hard disk drives have been around for far longer. You often develop games around the most common limitation of hardware. Game developers were making games with hard disk technology in mind, especially since consoles still use hard disk drives and there was no appropriate API on Windows. Modern games are also developed years in advance on mature game engines that had not factored in the benefits of SSDs and especially NVMe SSDs. So these video games were made to take full advantage of the strengths of hard disk drives, basically sequential performance. Games were developed to send less frequent data requests for large amounts of data. SSDs on the other hand can handle more frequent smaller and random data requests much more quickly. These were often referred to as I.O. requests or IOPS and hard disk drives can only handle a small number of I.O. requests per second. But Modern SSDs, on the other hand, can process a large number of I.O. requests in short order. Game developers can take advantage of this by requesting a lot of random I.O. in moderately sized chunks so that SSDs can queue these up provided high levels of bandwidth. This uses both the bandwidth advantage of PCI Express and the speed of the flash memory to far exceed the capabilities of any hard disk drive. So what exactly is the benefit of this in video games? Let's take the example of an open world game. 
In an open world video game with massive levels, the game is programmed to prioritize what is in front of the character and optimize to not load the graphics for places that are really far away. This helps increase the game's performance and FPS, but it means that as you got closer to those areas that are further away, sometimes the graphics of certain objects would be processed a little bit later with assets and textures needing to be reloaded if not cached. This would cause the graphics of that certain object to pop into the world or for the game to stutter. This can break the player's immersion, but with direct storage, the loading of these graphics and assets can be optimized to reduce these negative effects. Further to this, it can allow the game designers to optimize for NVMe SSDs so that the game experience is faster and of higher quality with the right hardware. This means smoother open world gameplay because assets can be cached with the assistance of fast storage and saving on VRAM. This is just one of many advantages Direct Storage has to offer. Another amazing way Direct Storage can increase game performance is by using compression. See, most game files are compressed to reduce the size they take up on storage devices. While it is obviously useful because the game files take up less space on your storage device, it can also mean that to use those files, the CPU has to decompress them before it can actually use them. Direct storage improves this performance by simplifying how storage is managed, but it is also possible to extend this benefit. As it turns out, GPUs are really great at decompression due to the abundance of cores and an architecture distinctly useful for certain computing tasks. Direct storage can take advantage of that by offloading all of the decompression work to the GPU. This will provide some relief to the CPU and that can help reduce latency and free up the CPU for other tasks like physics or AI. According to Microsoft, it can reduce the CPU overhead by as much as 40%. Direct Storage attempts to streamline the graphics processing involved in running video games, letting games be programmed to optimize by balancing system resources to remove bottlenecks. This can have a huge impact on gaming performance with the right hardware and proper game development. Just to give you an idea of how direct storage promises to decrease load times and increase performance, according to a recent GDC 2022 talk by Luminous Productions, the game developers force for spoken with direct storage, they have been able to cut down loading times for Forspoken from 10 seconds all the way down to one second. In a demonstration, their system was able to load a 5.5 gigabyte scene in about 1.9 seconds with the help of direct storage. This is just the beginning. We are in the infancy stage of direct storage's development. There are still some kinks that Microsoft still needs to work out to optimize better for GPU compression, but Microsoft did say that they will have this worked out before it hits the mainstream for Windows 10, but best on Windows 11 to support cutting edge hardware. One question that will be popping up in every gamer's mind is what kind of hardware will be required to actually take advantage of direct storage? Well, the system requirements are pretty reasonable actually. First and foremost, you will require an NVMe SSD and preferably a PC 4.0 or newer NVMe SSD. This is because direct storage is being developed with these kinds of storage in mind, so it will be better optimized for it. Direct storage may be supported on many NVMe SSDs, but whether it will run well is a different question. There is a bare minimum amount for required performance, around two gigabytes per second or so, but drives can also be specifically optimized for direct storage. This is where we'll see gaming specific drives like our newly announced Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus G SSD, which has fast hardware and our custom O2 Go firmware built specifically for this kind of IO. Direct storage will also only work with with games that have DirectX 12 support. This is because Direct Storage is a DirectX API technology. Games must also be developed with Direct Storage in mind or can be updated to support it, but this may require a lot more work than some developers are willing to do. Similar to how DLSS or ray tracing has become a thing for games to either be updated with or developed with in mind, it's only a matter of time before we see this same transition for Direct Storage too. Like with 
any new technology. Rollout is always a bit slow to start, but can gain traction after about a year or two. Moving on to CPU, GPU, and other hardware requirements. Most modern CPUs and GPUs made within the last five years or so should work fine, but ideally your hardware should support PC 4.0 for the best experience. As direct storage can reduce CPU and VRAM overhead, weaker components can be compensated for with fast storage on appropriately developed titles, but you will still want to exceed the current gaming system requirements or minimum requirements to ensure a tight experience. While the benefits of direct storage truly look amazing, it's important to note that API level technologies do take their time to fully mature, so it will take a little bit of time before we see its full utilization, but it is super exciting to see it coming to PC Finally, extra performance for existing and future hardware is always nice to see. And with that, we've come at the end of this video. If you found this video interesting, then make sure to smash that like button and also hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with more content like this one. Anyway, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.